Hi everybody, I'm Argle Funf. This is a review for Dear America, Dreams of the Golden Country, The Diary of Zipporah Feldman, A Jewish Immigrant Girl, New York City, 1903. What a really, really long title. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've never heard of the Dear America series before. Apparently it's just uh, a series for, I'd say, middle schoolers. Uh, I like historical fiction, usually. I like the American Girl books are are decent, and this seems to be along those lines, but uh, a lot meatier and a lot longer. Uh, this one is a diary of a girl named Zippy. Zippo is her full name, but she's called Zippy. Uh, it starts with her arriving in America, going through Ells Island, and Ellis Island, not Ells Island, sorry. And, you know, it just describes her life. Like, she's, she's there with her two sisters and her mother. Her dad's already been there for about a year. And uh, we've got a couple of themes which go on throughout the book. Like, uh, the big one is just identity and who you are. Because it seems like America has changed people. Like, uh, Papa uh, no longer wears the uh, fancy sideburns or stuff. And the uncle doesn't wear as his yarmulke anymore. And, um, like, her, her one sister, over the course of the book, falls in love with this Catholic boy and runs away to get married with him. And, you know, she goes to see her sister a few times, but she can't bring herself to actually talk to her sister. And mom is really upset at uh, what the sister did. Mom decides to hold a Shiva. Um, and uh, her other sister kind of seems focused on, like, making unions, making a union, a woman's union for, for workers because they, these poor immigrants are just like unskilled laborers. They work in the factories all day long in terrible conditions. And I, I think the book could have gone more into detail on that. Like, I think she could have actually visited a factory and seen the conditions. That that would have been interesting. Um, uh, similarly reflected with a family that lives down, uh, down the hall from them, which is, uh, uh, you know, it's an Irish family. And... Uh, the grandmother fights with the daughter-in-law uh, simply because they're from different parts of Ireland, and they just fight constantly about that. And a similar thing comes up when uh, they're Russian, they are Russian Jews, and seems to be different from the German Jews, because the German Jews have done a much better job of assimilating into America and assimilating uh, American culture, and they tend to be like, rich rich and wealthy and it's sort of a sense of a tense source of tension uh simply because it's like well uh they seem to have given up being jews completely uh for the sake of fitting in in america and being successful and like mother's really worried uh that's what father's doing uh mother is wearing a wig i'm I'm not quite sure uh, why, but she, she wears a wig the whole time as a sign of her uh, religion. And, you know, people make fun of her for it. They're like, you're in America. You don't have to do that anymore. But she, she insists on doing that to her dying day. And uh, we've also got a couple storylines like... Uh, uh, Zippy doesn't know English, and half of the entries are are written in English to indicate that an entry, a diary entry, is written in English. It's it's done in italics, and so she she and her friend are basically working together to study to learn English, and uh, you know that way they don't have to be in second grade anymore. They'd rather be in um, seventh grade or so. So definitely a middle school book, like 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 I indicated, and um, Zippy. Um, Learns about famous people like there's a uh, Marie Curie and the Wright brothers. Those happen over the course of this 18 month book. That's how long the book is, 18 months. And so she writes to them. She doesn't hear back from either of them. Um, and she decides she she gets really interested in the Yiddish theater, uh, and she just attends regularly and sort of at the end her dream comes true uh, where she she gets to be like an emergency prop master and she gets to act in a play and uh, the epilogue indicates that she grows up to be super successful and, and world famous and uh, she helped out during world war ii and the epilogue i'm like whoa really was she a real person and then the thing at the back of the book said uh, no, she's not real. She's totally fake. And I'm like, oh, okay. Let's 
kind of strange to have an epilogue from the point of view of what happened to her uh, in the 1990s, which I assume is when this book was written. Uh, I'll check it out right now. Uh, yeah, 1998. So, yeah, kind of weird to have an epilogue about, you know, her in the 1990s, which, wow, that would be like 90 years. Yeah, about 90 years after this book takes place. So let's say she lived to be 100. Anyway, um, I thought this book was okay. I thought it was just... You know, average, it's got good historical stuff. I wasn't all that uh, invested in the book, but uh, the ending was a real whammy, because the ending does, like, a, there's a couple of things at the ending where this one actress she likes just dies suddenly. And then, oh, there's something else, something else big. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Ooh. It's... I don't want to say Nancy Drew, Ghost of Thornton Hall, but it's like that where um, people are, workers are trapped inside a building and there's a fire, but the, the building owners lock the doors because they don't want the workers leaving early. And so they kind of are, they kind of all die in a fire. Oh, yeah, and the other one is that uh, big dramatic thing is that the mother gets pregnant and she dies. No, not the mother dies. The baby dies. The poor baby dies really early on in its life. And, it, like, the views of death at the end of the book kind of contrast to uh, the views of life in, like, the first half of the book. Because they've got this really annoying neighbor that she really doesn't like. Uh, and um, he dies about halfway through. And the way she handles his death uh, is really different from the way she handles the death of her younger child, her younger sibling and uh, the death of this person that she idolized. And, and the death of the sibling is basically what causes a family to stop pretending their, their daughter who ran away is dead for real. She's reunited with the family because life is too short to, to spend it on, on petty squabbles like that. And it sort of like Fiddler on the Roof. It had tones of that. And it just really hit me. Um, I was reading this on the bus, on the, you know, on the way home. I was just flat out bawling for uh, 30 minutes, just crying my eyes out um, over this unexpected feelings. And some of that is just stuff that's going on in my life, because I've got a daughter who's uh, a teenager now, and you might have noticed she doesn't show up in any of my videos anymore, because she doesn't care about my videos anymore. And I, I just like, oh no, and the, like the song from Fiddler on the Roof, Sunrise, Sunset, about the little children growing old, and they don't know them anymore, and they're gone, and, and it just, I was crying for a good 20, 30 minutes, and it is a, gosh, I'm gonna start crying now too. Um, it is a personal policy of mine, like if a book makes me cry, it gets a 10 out of 10, and so, like this book I thought was average, but it's getting a 10 out of 10 because of it, of the make Michael cry rule, and yes, I've done that with other books on this channel. Um, not, I, I, with Pollyanna, Pollyanna, that, that was another big one. Um, not the best Christmas pageant ever, although there are definitely lots of people who, um, you know, cried when they, they read the book, and that's why they love it, because it does have a really touchy and a touching ending. Um, trying to think of another example. I, I think, yeah, well, those are like the only three I can think of off the top of my head. Um, so, would I recommend this book? Maybe, maybe, you know, if it sounds like something you'd be interested in, check it out. I generally thought it was average until the ending about death, losing family members just really punched me in the gut and made me cry my eyes out like a little baby. So, uh, I'm not sure if I would recommend the book or not, but, uh, it, it, it moved me. So, that's probably uh, all I can say. Yep. Thanks for watching my review. Bye.